Hello, Contractor Education Network and Landscape Systems and Marketing. Ross Causey here. This is a brief overview of labor issues 2021 that we are all facing. I know in my little business, we're facing it. And many other contractors across the country are facing these issues too. So don't feel alone. Today, we are honored to have Jim Wirtz of Landscape Systems and Marketing here with us, a longtime landscape contractor who has been there and done that in the industry. So uh, just as, as a little aside about myself, my name is Ross Causey, administrator of this Contractor Education Network. I love being here because I'm always learning something from you guys. And I'm honored to be able to do that, to have a small part of it. And that's a little bit about myself. So Jim, I'm gonna turn this over to you, bud, and talk a little bit about yourself. And we're gonna talk about these labor issues of 2021 that we're all facing. Sure. Hey guys, my name's Jim Wirtz. I had my landscape company for over 35 years in Altoona, Pennsylvania. And um, in that time, I made all the mistakes you could possibly make, but from those mistakes were my most valuable lessons that I actually uh, teach today. And I do group coaching, um, real transparent about that. But the other thing too is in the process, I hired hundreds and hundreds of employees and sold millions of dollars in landscape jobs. Um, so I learned a lot like everybody here is learning every day. And one of the things that I found uh, that helped me, I got coaching early on in my business. I sort of fell into it. Luckily, um, you know, and learned a lot. What it did for me was expedite my process in, uh, in, my, in success of business. So that's what I really like to help companies with today. But hiring is always an issue. Uh, it's never easy, but it's not impossible either. And what I find that uh, a lot of times if you make a few uh, mental adjustments as far as the mind shift on how you look at the hiring process, because I know a lot of guys look at it as a drudgery and I did too for a long time, like, you know, employees, your biggest asset, they're your biggest liability. So it's like, I, I feel bad for the guys who are um, throw, sort of throw their hands up and be like, I'll just go work on the crew myself. I want to have employees. It's less headache. And, you know, I'll just go do it myself. And that's, that's fine if you want to do it that way, but it's going to be tough to make a, I think a decent living because you're going to definitely be capped. Uh, it's going to be tough to be out there doing everything. So if you want to grow in this business, you gotta, you gotta be good with people who gives you money. People give you money, right? So the better you get with people and that goes with the hiring process, uh, the better, right? Right, Ross. I mean, I could, I could go on about it, but I, I could never be a one man's band. I, from day one, I wasn't. And I know my strengths and I know my weaknesses. So I'd much rather hire good people and get out of their way, provide training, yes, but get out of their way and let them do what they are good at. That being said, I know it's hard to find good people. And it's like Jim says, it's not impossible. Not impossible. Yeah, for sure. Yep. So a couple of the steps that um, in the hiring process, and it is a system uh, that we teach. And, and part of it is basically, first of all, it's mindset, understanding that, uh, you know, your average employee, a guy who just wheels a wheelbarrow and, and comes in for works for a season on the low end that I, I, coach guys all over the United States and Canada that, and put the numbers together just from their information that they tell me is, you know, $10,000 net profit on the low end an employee will bring you in. That's on the low end. A lot of guys is probably more like 12, 15, as high as 20 or more. Um, so with that, you know, it changed your outlook a little bit. So if you start looking as an employee as like a, a little gold nugget, so to speak, mm -hmm. instead of like, a, you know, a thorn in your side, then if you change that mindset and realize that everybody you go out and talk to or any ads you run, wherever they run, is you're prospecting basically is all you're doing. You're just, it's like a prospecting game. Everybody prospects. So um, the people who have the mindset to be able to prospect and have that mentality just to keep putting, putting the message out there, you're always looking for good people. 
um, are going to get those people to eventually come into your business. Now, you might go through a whole bunch of people until you find oh, yeah. those people. But understand that's everybody does. It's not just you can't, um, you know, I hear guys say, well, I, I throw an ad in and, you know, I've got five and I've got five uh, interviews lined up and I interviewed them and I, I had to make a quick decision. So I hired a guy. What he basically did was he hired the best of the worst, meaning, you know, he shouldn't have hired any, any of the five, but he felt under pressure. I need a guy to wheel wheelbarrow tomorrow, haul block. And he, you know, he appealed to me the most, right? So I hired him and then he comes in, the guy doesn't show up and you have all kinds of problems with him. So the hiring process, you've heard it before, hire slow, fire fast, right? And that's true. Uh, and we walk you through this, this process. First process is step in the process is really just putting out as many places as you can, like ads, um, you know, anything like Facebook ads, Indeed, even Craigslist. I know you're going to get a lot of uh, undesirables in there, but here's the deal. Like, and then the other part too, is you want to, you know, you got to picture yourself as you have a <laughs> megaphone and you're just broadcasting out because people aren't going to wake up in the morning and say, Hey, Russ Causey's looking for a good employee. I think I'll call him and give him one. That's not what happens. You have to be, take ownership of it and really project that message out and let people know, like, sound like a broken record sometimes. You know, I know in my, my business, I had between 12 and 15 employees at any one time. So I was always looking for, you know, a potential employee because just when you had a good crew lined up, guess what? Somebody leaves or a girlfriend breaks up with them or some crazy story, you know, and you get some crazy stories, but it's just understand it's part of the game and who the people that I find I work with who have good solid crew members and continue to find these people are doing what I'm telling you to do. And that's really just being that megaphone, getting that message out there. Um, would you agree with that, Ross? Oh, yeah, absolutely. We always have to be, like you said, prospecting, looking for those good employees and and picking and choosing carefully. I've been under that pressure of needing a wheelbarrow guy tomorrow. Yeah, I've made those mistakes. I'm never doing that again, though, because it just leads to a lot of headaches and heartaches and disappointment and I've been there and done that. I don't want to do that. But it is pressure. I know it is intense pressure. You've made these promises. You've made these obligations, you know, to, to get a certain amount of work done in a certain period of time. I know I do the same thing. And we want to meet or exceed those obligations. I know I do. So it's, it's a, we're under pressure. I know. And you combine that with modern day incentives, for lack of a better way to put it, modern day incentives for not working, then that just makes our jobs a little bit more challenging. But there are good people out there. There are good people that enjoy working outside, that want to be in the elements, so to speak that want to be building or creating and, and satisfying that need within themselves. There are good people out there. And it's, it's that constant prospecting, that constant looking, that constant, you know, energetic desire to find the right people, whether it's key people or if it's, you know, like Jim says, normal everyday wheelbarrow pushers. That's fine. There are good people out there. So yeah. it's up to us to find them. So that's why we're doing this today is to try and shed some light on where we've been and where we can potentially go with this process. Yeah. And one, one tip I'll give you, some of you might be doing this, some may not, uh, working with my guys who are using it, it becomes, some of them are doing this one thing I'm going to tell you, that's all they're doing and they're able to sustain their crews. And that's doing a, uh, a bonus referral program with your existing employees. Now, the, the difference is with this is you're not just saying, hey, I'll give you 20 bucks or 100 bucks to uh, go talk to your friends and family and find out who may want to come and work for your company. Uh, number one, the, the benefits are is your existing employees, they know the hours you work, they know how you are as a, a boss, 
They know mm -hmm. the culture of your company and they know the equipment that you use. So they, they have an inside track on that. So when they go talking to people, they can tell them, hey, this guy's got nice equipment. He's a good guy to work for, blah, 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 right? Um, what really makes it work is, and I want to preframe before I tell you what it is, is keep in mind that your average employee will make you $10,000 net profit, if not more, in a season, you know, whether whatever your season is. So don't be afraid to spend money to find these people, right? A lot of people are like, I don't want to I'm spending a fortune in ads and I, you know, I might want to make sure I, I find them, but it's a catch 22. You got to put the money in ads and broadcasting the message before you get the results. It's, you know, pay to play type thing. Uh, but if you sit back and wait for them to come to you, they're not coming, but anyhow, so what you want to do is basically, yeah, basically want to uh, uh, make the offer. So that I always say, so their eyebrows raise, meaning like, you know, you ever had somebody tell you something, you're like, wow, that's impressive. Your eyebrows raise, right? So one of the things these guys are doing, they're paying like uh, 500 bucks or in that range to their employees. And they say to them, hey, you know, I'm doing a uh, bonus referral program. Uh, here's how it works. You go out and talk to your friends and family and they come in, um, they do an interview with me. I'm, I'm going to be making a final decision as a business owner. It's up to me, it's up to you to make the final decision. But if they come and stay and work for 30 days, I'm going to pay you 500 bucks, right? All you do is go, talk to people, send a text, whatever. Now this employee has a little incentive, right? Like 500 bucks just to open my mouth. Sure. Why wouldn't I do it? The benefit to you is, okay, worst case scenario, they come. Uh, first of all, remember you make the final decision in the hiring process. So you decide whether you want to hire, hire this guy or, or interview them. But if you do hire them, they come and work for you for 30 days and quit, right? In the meantime, that doesn't, that probably won't happen that often. But in the meantime, you really didn't lose money because they came and hopefully worked and at least made you that 500 bucks um, in, the, in that month's time, right? So if they come, worst case scenario, work 30 days, quit, and you pay your guy 500 bucks, well, he's happy. He's going to go out and keep finding more guys, which is positive. Uh, and you just broke even if nothing else. So that's sort of the worst case scenario, but it's a great way for these, uh, your employees to go out and keep talking to their friends, family, because you don't know if they talk to Uncle Joe at the picnic and Uncle Joe knows a couple good guys. And the message is you want to get that network as big as possible built out. And that's, that's it'll increase your chances of having, uh, you know, better response um, in the process. You know, I find that guys who are like, you know, I've tried all this bull crap before it doesn't work and I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm tired of it. That's a mindset. And, and first thing you got to do is change that mindset. I've been there. I've, like I said, I've hired hundreds of guys and you get burnt out after a while. You think, yeah, you know, I've hired like a bunch of guys and none of them worked out and you can get really put, you know, down and out. But you got to just look at it as a mining, a prospecting system that you're always reaching out, always reaching out. And you will find those good people pop in. You're looking for those A-type players because what happens then you find a couple of those guys, they take a lot of uh, responsibility. I'm talking to guys who can maybe have a little experience and can go out good with people, can go out and, you know, do well for you. Take So each time you get a good employee, they're going to take a little bit more responsibility off your shoulder, make your life a little easier. Yeah. Absolutely. I've, I found that to be very true. They don't want to see their referral fail because it makes them look bad too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yep. Um, and so here's a couple other places uh, and it's just full on, you know, it's like, I always give this scenario, like when you're in a jet or you're a pilot, uh, these pilots to take off, you know, it's, it's full throttle down the runway. It's not 50%. It's full throttle because the hardest part of the hiring process, the hardest part of getting a plane off the ground is the runway, you know, taking off. Like they got to get the plane in the air so they get enough speed that the, wind, the air goes over top of the wings and creates lift and does the work for them. The same way with prospect. You got to put a lot of energy and effort into it in the beginning mm -hmm. to get it up and running and keeping, as I say, keep the bench filled. You always want to be able to, you know, have a, a potential guy coming on board, whether you need him or not because I don't know if you ever had this happen to you. I call it, you can't let the inmates run the asylum. Meaning like if you, uh, you know, you have a crew, they're a good crew. And then you get a prima donna, a guy who's been with you a while. Now he's starting to like, well, you need me boss. What are you going to do? Fire me? Who's going to replace me? And they all chuckle together and make a big joke about it. Now you're, you know, you're being held hostage in your own company is what's happening. 
So the, the, yeah. the, the combat that you have to keep filling your bench with this hiring process, always be spending money, looking for people and your crew knows that now they're thinking, well, before I open my mouth and get cocky about it, Ross has some people lined up that may be able to take my place. So now they're more, a little more uh, obedient as far as like paying attention, so to speak. Um, do you find that true? Yeah. You ever been held hostage your own company? I know I have. Oh, heck yeah. I, I hate to admit it, but yeah, I have. And I hated it. And I didn't catch on to it until I, I should have caught on to it much sooner than I did. But I wasn't aware of that at the time. And uh, yeah, I was held hostage. Didn't last long. Yeah. I nipped it in the bud. But it infected everybody That's and it. i did not have a good bench at that time i did not have you know the the backup players and um it was a mistake but i'm never going back there again and a friend of mine in this little town in pennsylvania has a hvac company and on the back of his trucks he always has a hiring sign, now hiring, with a phone number. And he tells me, hey, if I'm hiring or not, that's always there. I'm always looking for people. It may be six months down the road, but we're always looking for good people. Plus, the thing is, it makes it appear to the public as if they're growing and being successful and doing the right things. I thought that was brilliant. Yeah. So some of these little nuggets, I hope you guys get out of this today that uh, you can take back and, you know, to your own businesses and, and prosper with it. Um, you know, it, it's like putting a dollar into a slot machine. Sometimes you're going to win. Sometimes you're going to lose. But overall, like Jim says, with typical average, okay, I know things change. Typical average employee, they're going to make you $10,000 within a season. So it's like putting a dollar into a slot machine and getting $5 back. Yeah. Why wouldn't you do it? Why wouldn't you implement a good prospecting program of some sort, whether it's referrals, whether it's bonuses, incentives, whatever, why not? Yeah. Yep. I have a couple of companies that that's all they do is that bonus referral but they give a nice bonus. So it makes it worthwhile. If you give a mediocre bonus, they're not going to make a big effort, but if it's, you know, substantial and their eyes or eyebrows raise, they're going to go out and talk because it's easy money for them. And they may be, you know, you just may need one guy out of your crew to be your spokesman. He's like, heck yeah, I'll do this all day long, you know, and he'll hustle and go talk to a lot of his friends and he might bring in, you don't know. That's what, that's the, sort of the beauty of this thing. You just never know, you know, who's going to bring in, uh, who to your company. But the other thing too, is, uh, look into, um, you know, uh, thinking of this guys are like, well, I don't have time to do springs here. I got estimates. I'm doing all these estimates every day, but mm -hmm. it's like a catch 22. If you don't spend the time and you have a regular crew and you, you end up being held hostage in your own company, because eventually these guys quit, they don't show up, whatever, you know, even if you have a solid crew now, you have to have backups. It's like any professional, uh, football team, like they have the bench, right? Like they have the, for the guys who get hurt or injured or not playing well, right? Bring in the second string, bring in the third string. That's the same concept here. You got to have that bench. You got to, you got to have somewhere to go. If a guy up and quits, you need to be like, replace them quickly. And you have to have some people that you can call back. Maybe they're there. Maybe they're not. Doesn't matter. You just got to keep, keep getting the word out because uh, things change a lot uh, on, on the other end of people. Um, and I'd recommend, you know, you're not looking for the people who don't have work. You're looking for the people who do have work. And those, those were always my best guys. Cause a lot of guys maybe have a good job and they're making better money than you'll pay them, but they just, they don't like their job. They're looking for a change. Keep that in mind. I heard a lot of my guys that way. Um, but look at like local clubs, rotary clubs, get to know the, the presidents of rotary clubs, chamber of commerce, you know, they all have chamber of commerce, get to know that guy. Uh, I did that. I walked in one day to my uh, local chamber of commerce, didn't know the guy, the secretary was like, what do you want? I'm like, I want to meet the president. You know, I just have a chat with him, walked in, met him, uh, great guy, spent 10 minutes, told him a little bit about my business, 
what I was doing, who I was looking for. He's like, great, I'll keep that in mind. He introduced me to so many other business owners and helped me get employees just from that one meeting. So yeah, oh, that's a great that. idea. Yeah. Gr great idea. Yeah. So, you know, it's one of those things that it's, uh, if you find the right employees, they're going to relieve the burden of you having to be on the job day in and day out and answering all their questions on a daily basis. To me, that's not where I wanted to be in my business. I wanted to run it like a business and not uh, be stuck on the job. I would go to the job if I needed to and work when I wanted to, but I didn't have to be there, you know? Uh, so, but yeah, clubs, Rotary clubs, chamber of commerce, local tech schools, right? Local colleges, all that stuff. Uh, here's another one that I had good luck with coaches, football coaches, wrestling coaches, like the physical coaches, you know, soccer or whatever, go get to know those guys. Cause guess who they know? They know all these kids who are getting the grade to graduate or graduating for college and all this stuff. So got a lot of college kids that way. Um, so there's multiple ways. Yes, it does take time. It does take energy. It is work, but it's, you know, you got to look at what your track record is in the past. If you're struggling to find employees, if that's the case, then it's time to change. Like you got to get a different mindset and be like, okay, I need to try new techniques. So it's like in football, if the play does if you run the play twice and it doesn't work, you don't run it a third time. You change the play, right? You got to, you know, if you're running the ball and you can't run up the middle, then pass it or something. Same thing here. Like a lot of us as business owners, we're very habitual. So we get in the same habits. You get up the same <laughs> side of the bed every day. You go to the bathroom and do your deal the same way every day. You go to the kitchen and do you eat, drink your same beverage every morning. We're very habitual. So in our mindset and thinking, uh, like the hiring process, we tend to go back to the same old, same old stuff, whether it's working well or not sometimes because we get stuck. So it's easy to do that. Trust me. <laughs> very easy. I have been in ruts and I've sought help and they got me out of those ruts and showed me a better way of doing things. Yep. I've never wanted to, to have a job. I've always wanted to have a business. Any one of us can have a job. I've never been interested in that. I've always tried to work myself out of my job that I have now as a business owner, because that's what I want to be a business owner and not a, a, um, not, not to have just a job. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah. I know. Yeah, no, it's, it's right. It's, you know, a lot of guys just basically, uh, developed a, a job for themselves is all it is because, mm -hmm. you know, I hear, I hear guys like I haven't taken a vacation in two years and I'm like, man, dude, oh. change stuff. You got to change it. It's gotta, you gotta like, I took my family, once I got systems in my business, not, not in the beginning, I made all the mistakes in the beginning, but through coaching, these guys straightened me up and they were pretty hard on me. They're like, you need to change, bro. Why are you doing it this way? And, you know, step up a little bit. And that really helps. Yeah. You know, sometimes I just need a kick in the butt. Um, but it really helped me open my eyes to what I was doing and what I need to do. But it helped me to take uh, vacations, took the kids out of school, um, been married my wife like 37 years now, but four girls. We take them out of school in February, go to Fort Lauderdale and be like down there for 10, 10, 12 days or longer while my snowplow operations ran here in Pennsylvania. In the summertime, we'd go out west for 10 or 12 days while my landscape operations ran full swing. I didn't stop my operations because I left town. They kept mm -hmm. running. And the reason I got into that, Ross, was because early on, I realized if I got sick, hurt, or injured, my family was screwed if I didn't have systems in place because my guys would last about two days and the whole company would implode. So that always motivated me to get systems in place, one being the hiring system. But I want to go over it like uh, three more steps in the process to, in the hiring system that I haven't talked about yet. We'll make it quick. Um, the next step is basically after you broadcast, get the message out, right? Um, running ads, talking to people, local people, doing the... Uh, the bonus system with your employees. Next step in the process is you want to create a form. So wherever you send it, whoever gets the form or whoever gets the ad, there's a link to a form. They have to fill out the form first. Now you're getting information about them and uh, you know they have to fill out all the questions on the form because they don't fill out the form and they send it to you. I wouldn't hire that person because they can't follow directions, right? Simple stuff, get them to jump through hoops. They fill out a form, you ask them questions uh, in the form 
in the one question, we even ask what type of personality they are. We don't say what type of personality you are. I, I word it in a different way that when I get it back, I know what type of personality they are. Why do you want to know somebody's personality type? It's really important. You can close more sales and you, you can uh, communicate better with your employees once you know how they think compared to how you think, that type of thing. I mean, that's a whole subject in itself. Uh, but then the next step after you, you get the form, now you have these forms. Now you can pick and choose like, okay, this is worth my time. This one isn't. So you're saving a lot of time. You haven't talked to them yet by going through the forms. Now, once you get your forms back, you decide who you want to call. Uh, next step is like a five minute phone call. Call these people up, introduce yourself, chat with them a little bit, see what their energy level is. See if you want to bring them into the office, if, you know, depending on what they say. And you're basically setting up the appointment for the uh, interview is what you're doing or not. If you don't like the call, you're like, okay, well, I'll get back to you or whatever. So then the next step, you have them come into your office or coffee shop or wherever you want to meet them for like a 20 to 30 minute interview. And in our back office, we have a whole list of questions, uh, what you want to ask them in the interview process. So that you get the most out of the interview and you can really help you get the information you want um, in that interview. Uh, what here's a key point too, Ross is what we used to do in our businesses, which really helped. Um, so once we thought we were going to hire a guy, you know, I'm like, okay, I'm, I'm good with them. I would bring my foreman in or bring one of your key players in and have them interview him because guess what? He's going to be the guy working with this guy. Yep. That's well, a I'm, must do. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I used to interview them, hire them, send them out in the crew. And then if they weren't working out, the crew would be mad at me and be like, what would you hire this guy for? So then it was on me. But when they hire him, the foreman, and the guy's not working out, the foreman tries a little harder to train him up a little better because he's basically feeling a little responsible for him. And then it's on him and not me. And it just works better, uh, a lot better. A, a lot better. I know. We do that too. Good. Yeah. Must do. Yeah. And then, um, Good stuff. yeah, the final step is basically what I do. And this is why it takes a little time, but you can get a better uh, hiring process. Once you say, okay, um, you know, you feel pretty good. You're going to hire this guy. Uh, you never say, okay, I'm going to hire you. Say, I'll get back to you. And what I would do is get back to him in a couple of days or whatever, and then say, Hey, you know what? I'm just kicking around. I got a couple of candidates. I'm trying to figure out, you know, where I'm going to go with it. Uh, would you mind meeting me out in the job? You know, so I call it my over the hood interview. So I try to get them out to the job if possible and get them out there, meet them over the hood of your truck or whatever for 10 minutes and just say, come casual. And why do you want to do that? Because in the interview, sometimes they'll try to dress up or be a little bit of who they really aren't, you know, more formal. Uh, not they wear suit and tie, but uh, in the over the hood, it's very casual. So they're going to come with their nose rings and, you know, eight penny nails in their ears and tattoos or whatever, you know, so you get a better glimpse of them and they're going to come with their girlfriend or whoever, right? Because just say, come as you are. I don't care. Just show up. Really, that's the that's the one you, you'll get a good look at them. Um, have a brief, you know, discussion. They get to see what landscaping is because I hired most of my guys raw. They didn't have experience. And so now they're like, Oh, this is what a landscape job looks like. Look, that guy's actually sweating over there, digging in that mud. He's full of mud, you know, so they <laughs> look, right? Like, cause you want them to see, like, you want the answer now, like say, oh no, this isn't for me. And then you save yourself a lot of time and headache or the guy's like, oh, this is cool. This is what I'd want to do. Right. So I definitely recommend going through those steps. You'll, you'll get a better candidate. Absolutely. Totally agree with that. Meet them in the environment that you're going, they would be working in every day. Yeah. And you'll see in their eyes, what? How do people do this? Or, yeah, 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 this is so cool. Yeah. I've always classified there's two types of people in the world. One type, they love to work outside in the environment, in the conditions, good, bad, or ugly. And the other type is indoors only. And I was never an indoor guy. And that's one of the first things I look for is, can they tolerate working outdoors every day? Yep. yep. A lot of people can't. And I respect that. I get that. I know what it's like. But I, I'm having a hard time being inside 
on a nice, gorgeous day like this. Right, right. So exactly. Hey, just occurred to me a couple other places I didn't mention, like you said, that people like to work outside, uh, hunt clubs, fishing clubs, hiking clubs, you know, hit them up. Um, cause those are the people who like to be outside. And that's a lot of my guys were hunter and fishermen, you know? And, yeah. So. Yeah. Good point. Oh, Jim, there's been so many golden nuggets in here today. And I, I hope our ladies and gentlemen watching this will be able to implement some of them. That's the purpose with this. Yeah. And, and this will be an ongoing series. You know, this is not just once and done, folks. Ongoing series because we realize it is a ongoing problem for us all. Yeah. But you can, you can make, uh, you, 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 you can turn the situation around. It is possible. It can be done. I know many days it seems like it's impossible, but it can be done. Yeah. And it takes a systematic step by step by step process. And you may have to reach out to someone like Jim or myself or someone. Reach out to someone. Get that help. Yeah. As a young contractor, that's what I did. And it was kind of out of desperation because I was at the end of my rope and I didn't have systems in place. I didn't know how to account for my overhead. Uh, I, I didn't know how to handle clients the right way, but I got set in the right direction and boom, made my life a lot easier and better. So reach out to people for help. That's all I'm trying to say. Yeah. And one other thing, Ross, is, uh, you know, for a lot of the guys who probably are sitting here looking at this going, I dread hiring people. I just hate the process. When you know the system, you can give it off to an office admin, a potential, you know, your mm -hmm. wife, possibly somebody else to do it for you because it's a system. Like, here's the steps you take. It doesn't have to be you. Like, I would recommend you be the one interviewing because, you know, they're going to be working for you. But even that, I mean, if you have the right people in place, you don't even have to be a part of this, the hiring process. Uh, I literally did, I did the, because I wanted to, I did the main interview, but everything else was done by other people in my company. Um, I just did the, 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 like the half hour main interview and the rest was done by other people. So, um, nice. It worked well. Yep. Yeah. Good. Good stuff. Good. Okay. Well, we promised you guys, this would be about half an hour or so. And we, just run over time a little bit but uh look listen in the comments below please post any questions or comments that you have post you know if, you, if you've gotten something good out of this post it there if uh you know if we can be of any help in any way don't hesitate to reach out and uh like i said this will be this is the first in a ongoing series of chats about labor issues of 2021 because we're all up against it yep okay good jim thank you so much for taking time out of your day to be here to impart some really great tips and information for these members and uh you know look for more on this perfect i appreciate your time ross and i hope uh, i hope you guys got value of some sort and uh great thank you all right. Take care. All right. We'll see you. So long for now.